Goose is getting fat. Please spare a penny for this young child's hat. If not a penny, a half will do. If not a half, then God bless you. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, G. No, I want to do a uh, gentleman like that. Everybody's a scrooge. Is that so? Well, can you spare a bob or two for me, Axe? Yeah, a fine penny too, then. A penny? What's that going to do? Where are you from? The 1800s? <laughs> Maybe I am. Uh, old Jones, what they call me. Yeah, have you escaped from somewhere? <laughs> I'm your Majesty's uh, other force agent. <laughs> oh, no reason. Uh, we were just Ebenezer Scrooge then. Ah, well. Uh, good heavens. You never heard of Ebenezer Scrooge? I wouldn't be asking if I had, would I? Um, it was tight fisted, uh, it was bitter. Uh, no, no, well, he was, uh, he was the original Mr. Grimm. A, a man most foul, a, a stone for a heart. Uh, well, he was in, uh, he was in the story at the very start. Wow, not bad. I like how you did all that in rhyme. Uh, what can I say, this Charles Dickens uh, bloke, he, he, was, he was rather good. A story? Uh, yeah, yeah, but well, indeed, it, it is which everyone must play a part. Even you and I? Well, especially uh, you and I, you and me, uh, because I am the storyteller. Yeah, I, I, I'm the narrator of this tale, uh, Mr. Scrooge, uh, Mr. Skinflint. Uh, a man of, of hatred uh, and greed, the uh, undisputed master of the underhanded deed. You just did it again. Uh, so come in closer and draw up a chair and uh, listen to our play and see how uh, this man came to uh, change his nasty way. All right, dude, you don't have to do it every time, otherwise you're going to get a tad annoying, and the bloke who adapted this ain't going to be able to keep up half the way through. You know, I was there when it happened. What? Victorian times? Uh, indeed I was. Dude, you're as old as... Well, I mean, it's whole Victorian London, you know what I mean? Sometime around 1843. Um, the Eve of Christmas Eve. Oh, yes. And Jacob uh, Marley, who uh, uh, well, was now dead, and uh, <laughs> dead as a dog now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's creepy. I like the story already. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge had uh, been uh, his business partner and uh, had uh, well, taken over the business. Um, the the long-suffering assistant Bob Cratchit, uh, that's him over there, you I mean... Uh, uh, Sat huddled over uh, the tiny desk, and his hands were uh, uh, well, painfully cold and wet. Tick, 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 tick. Ebenezer's crouch, tight fisted, trying, wrenching, gasping, screaming, kind of man. Hard and sharp as flint. Ruthless and unforgiving. Nipped. Shriveled. Stiffened. Freezy. Frosted. Bitter. Kind of man. If you take another coal from that scuffle, Cratchit, you will be seeking unemployment elsewhere. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I know a few geezers like that. Yeah, almost everybody hated him. Can't think why. Sorry, almost. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Bahum. Christmas? Bahum? Oh, Uncle, surely you don't mean that. Merry Christmas, you say. What right of you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. If I had my will, every man that went around with Merry Christmas on his lips would be cooked with his own turkey, and buried with a sprig of holly piercing his heart. Oh, uncle. My nephew, you celebrate Christmas in your way and let me celebrate it in mine. Christmas is a loving, honest and charitable time of the year. And although it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. So I say, God bless it. <laughs> and how does one celebrate Christmas on the unemployment line? 
Surely you have things to do this afternoon? Sadly, I do not. But I just came by to invite you to Christmas dinner with me and Clara tomorrow. Why ever did you get married? Because I fell in love. <laughs> That's the one thing in the whole world that's sillier than Merry Christmas. It would mean a lot to me if you came. No! And I advise you to not waste any more of your time on this Merry Christmas business. It's no use, Uncle. I will celebrate Christmas until the day I die. And the invitation remains open should you change your mind. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ham! Now, in these times, it, it, it was customary at uh, Christmas Eve uh, for well meaning gentlemen to uh, call upon uh, businesses like uh, well, collecting donations for the poor and homeless. I say, is this the office of Marley and Scrooge? It is. And do I have the honour of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these past seven years. He died seven years ago, this very night, in fact. Oh, uh, I am Mr. Williams. Uh, I, may I offer you my sympathy? What? You're not a relative, are you? No. But I am sure that he must be in your thoughts at this time of the year. And also at this time of the year, I am sure his generosity is reflected by that of his surviving partner. And of course, you know, at this time of the year, there, there are so many people who are hungry and um, Poor and, and I mean, some good donations would be only something I'm sure you want to give. I am pretty sure that you are new to the district. Oh, new and eager, sir. You will be aware that many thousands of people lack the basic necessities, and many hundreds of thousands lack. Ordinary comforts. I'm sure you would agree, sir. Are there no prisons or poor houses? Indeed there are, sir, but some would rather die. Well, they would rather die. They better get on and do it and decrease the surplus population. Mr. Cratchit, show this gentleman out. Oh, my. Good King Wentworth's last looked out on the feast of Stephen. Though the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon at night, though the past was cruel. When a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. You will want all day off tomorrow, I suppose? If it's convenient, sir. No, it is not convenient, it is not fair. If I was to deduct half a crown from your wages, you would think yourself ill-used. But you do not consider it me being ill-used when I have to pay you a whole day's wage for no work. It's half a, it's just once a year, sir. Buy an excuse for pickpocketing a man's pocket on the 25th of December. Very well. If you must have the whole day off, I will expect you in very early the next day to make up for all the time you have missed. You, sir. Th thank you, sir. Mary, you were about to say something, Mr. Cratchit. Nothing, sir. Scratch. 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 Snow. Ice. Snow. Ice. Snow, ice, snow, ice, snow, ice, frost, gloomy, dreary, dark, cold. Where does he live? How does he live? Is it me or is it getting really cold in here? Scrooge, he lived in a dark house, which had 
once uh, belonged to his old business partner, Jacob and Robert Marley. Uh, the building was uh, a, a dismal uh, heap of uh, brick uh, on a dark street. Now, uh, I ought to uh, remind you that uh, the Marleys were dead. I thought this was supposed to be a family show. It is, but uh, uh, it's an important part of the story. You know, Scrooge took, uh, uh, the, well, he <coughs> took out the, the, the key from his pocket and moved closer to the lock. I just love the dramatic tension here. Shush. Knock, knock. Who's there? The door knocker has suddenly changed shape into the old business partner's face. No. It cannot be. How can this be? You're dead. Jacob Marley is dead. Dead? Then I... As quick as it had appeared, I'd, I'd come, it, it disappeared. Scrooge hurried inside. He made his way up the staircase, carrying not a button for the darkness. Darkness was cheap, and Scrooge liked it. His heart was still pounding. He reached his bedroom and frantically peered around. Tap, 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 tap. What is that sound? Where is it coming from? Knock, 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 knock. It's coming from the door leading to a locked attic above. Who's there? Show yourself at once. Ha, 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 ha. Suddenly the noise stopped. Ebenezer, look ahead of you. Who are you? Boom! <laughs> did I scare you? I'm sure I did. I'm not scared of anyone. You're looking older and more wicked than ever. I knew you wouldn't disappoint. Who are you? Well, in life I was your partner, Jacob Marley. You look like him, but I don't believe it. You look old and dusty. And smell rather odd. Well, I am dead. You cannot be real. Why do you doubt your senses? Because a little this thing can affect them. A slight disorder of the stomach can make them cheat. You could be an undigested bit of beef. A blob of mustard, a crumb of cheese. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> yes, there is always Gravy and grave about you, bah, humbug. Oh, you still have a temper, I see. Tell me, do you believe me when I say that I am Jacob Marley, or not? I do. I must. But why in heaven's name do these spirits walk the earth? And why have they come to bother me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and travel wide. If that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. You are fettered. Jacob, tell me why. I wear the chains I forged in life. I have made them link by link, yard by yard. It is a ponderous chain. <clears throat> tell me, do you know the weight and strength of the coil that you bear? It is as heavy and strong as this seven Christmases before. You have laboured on yours since. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. <laughs> comfort? I am unto you. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot think of anywhere. In life, my spirit never walked, never went beyond the narrow limits of my money making hole. Now, we have been journeying this life before me. No! Now, I am in the end of the missed opportunities of being free from the torture of remorse. Jacob, I do not understand why you are suffering. In life, you were a good businessman. That is why I am suffering. The suffering I have caused others is now being repaid. It was business! Business? Mankind was my business. The common God was my business. Take that off me now, for my time is near. I do. But do not be hard on me. Don't be flowery, Jacob. I am here tonight to warn you that you may have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. A 
chance of hope of my curing, Ebenezer. You always said to befriend me. You will be haunted by three spirits. And you call that a chance of hope? Oh, it is. Well, I'd rather not. Without these visits, you cannot hope to shove the cards I now said. Expect the first tomorrow night when the bell tolls one. Expect the second the next night on the same hour. And expect the third the following night when the bell strikes midnight. Could I not just see them all at once and get it over with, no. Jacob? I am the ghost of Jacob Marley. Boom! I wear these rusty old chains for life, for all my wickedness and strife. I'm rotted, nasty, cold and greedy. I even took advantage of the poor and the needy. I specialize in causing pain and never, ever took the blame. I walked the streets spreading fear and doubt. And if you couldn't pay the rent, I simply threw you out. My heart was being but I should have known my evil deeds and come to pain back. For freedom comes from spreading love, prison comes from causing hate. I come to you to warn you now, my friend. It is time to change and amend before these rusty old chains are wrapped around you and there is nothing that you can do. <laughs> I am the ghost of Jacob Marley. Whoa! Look to see me no more and look out for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. Remember! And Jacob Barney was gone. And at that moment that, 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 that remained was the sound of the old grandfather's clock. Quite exciting too. <laughs> Scrooge quickly uh, took out his old pocket watch. He paused before giving out a large stop. Ah! Is it possible that I have slept whole day through? It cannot be. Expect the first spirit when the bell tolls one. Ding dong. Ding dong. Quarter past. Nothing. Ding dong. Ding dong. Half past. Nothing still. Ding dong. Ding dong. Still nothing. Quarter two. Nothing still. Just then the uh, <laughs> toll struck one. Silence. Shrew. Took, lifted his head up and listened out as the 
that the cold wind coming uh, from outside and sweeping through the large rooms of the house, uh, that the single candlelight uh, burning flickered as it moved from side to side. You're quite good at this storytelling, Lark. Thank you. Just at that moment, uh, the, the uh, toll began to toll on over and over again, followed by the sounds of a growing wind coming from the window. The curtains suddenly blew open. I could see a tiny light coming from the window. It was growing closer and closer. What is this? What is happening? What is this? Are you the spirit whose visit was foretold to me? I am. Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. What business brings you here? Your welfare. Oh, well, I'm very much obliged, but an unbroken night's rest would soon suffice. Your salvation, then. Rise. Come with me. Um, um, this bed being so warm and the thermometer being so below freezing, I think I'd rather stay. Come with me. Um, as you can see, Spirit, I have more slippers on. And, and I think I'm about to catch a cold. So if it's all the same, I'd rather stay. And please remember, Spirit, I am only mortal and liable to fall. You shall be upheld in more than this. It's okay. I only have to put my hand on your heart. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind may blow. First and hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago, what can I give him for as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would Christmas? I was not wanted. My father did 
did not want to know me after my mother had died. He sent me away. He never wanted to see me ever. That is hard. Life is hard. <clears throat> Let us see another scene from this place. No, they were all the same. Nothing ever changed. You changed. The years performed their uh, terrible dance, and in a few moments, Scrooge has seen his entire childhood before his very eyes. He watched as the schoolroom slowly started to age and decay. So, Mr. Scrooge, it is your graduation day. That's my only cross. He taught me the greatest of lessons. Ah, yes. To get on in life, you must work hard, work long, and be constructive. Life is a golden opportunity. Today, you will go forth into the real world. Keep your nose to the grindstone. If you work hard, your life will be as strong as this building. Seriously? There's holes in the roof, cracks in the wall, and the furniture's rotting. Well, young man, you have gained an apprenticeship at a fine company in London. Today, you will become man of business. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it, then, Master. I beg your pardon. I'm very much looking forward to it, good master. Yes, yes, you will love business. It is the British way. Yes, good master. Come here, come here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come to the there is much to see. Three, four, round and around, the face of the sea at the Christmas party home. Mistletoe hot, lady, you can't see it. Quiet down, everybody, please. Thank you very much. Welcome to Fezziwig's annual Christmas party. As tradition, I am to give a speech. And I have got some notes. Thank you all and Merry Christmas. That's it. Yeah, that was short. That was dumb. It was pointless! We oh, love it! The Fezziwigs were a larger than life and hard colour of them. Their main ambition in life was to laugh the way they could. There was never a dull day in that place. Mrs. Fezziwig, I thought you were a dog. Oh, yes, yes, I am, I am. But I need something to keep my strength up to get me through the lion. Partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. And. And. And on the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four holy birds. 
kitchen and pantry. I don't want to play a place in my food and get to me. Who's the black? And the black my boy was good bad. And then and, 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 and Mr. and Mrs. Fezzing said, I did go on. You say it every time. And even because I know how much it makes you smile. Well, why does it matter so much that you see me smile? Because you don't do it enough, Ebenezer. You're looking radiant as always, Belle. You like the dress then? Of course I do. It, it makes me smile. <laughs> <laughs> you were very fond of her, weren't you? As someone once said to me, if happiness shows up, give it a comfortable seat. True. You know, it doesn't take a lot to make people happy. We only spent a few pounds, three or four at most. Is it so much that he should be thankful for it? You do not understand, Spirit. He was a businessman. He had responsibilities he shouldn't have. Is that how Scrooge felt when he spoke to her? He felt... I felt... I... Let us look at a scene a few years later with this young woman. No, no, Spirit. Please do not show me that, Spirit. Another year until our wedding, Ebenezer. Can't help it, Belle. How could we marry now? We don't even have enough for a decent home. You said the same thing last year. Yes, well, business continues to be poor. We must be patient. But you're a partner now. Yes, and barely clearing expenses. You said partnership was the goal. Yes, it was. So, it is true. Another idol has replaced me. What idol? Money. I love you, Belle. Believe me, I'm doing this for us. You did love me. Once. Why do you torture me, Spirit? Show me no more, show me no more. I told you these are shadows of the things that have been. They are what they are. Don't blame me. Leave me! Leave me!
10 minutes. Nothing. 15 minutes. Nothing. Nothing. No spectre. No spirit. There's no one under my bed. There's no one in my dressing gown. No baby or rhinoceros or nothing in between. And there's nothing in my wardrobe. Nothing. At that moment, Scrooge began to hear a scratching noise, followed by a loud knocking noise, and then the sound of a door unlocking. His eyes peered around the room. He glared at the closed bedroom door. Nothing. Then, a whistle. Someone, something, was whistling. The chair to which Scrooge sat began to shake before the whistle stopped and was replaced by a loud voice. Oh, what fun it is 
the window to watch father walking up the road, his feet bouncing in the snow as he carried Tim on his shoulders. They smiled and waved to everyone, and everyone waved back and wished them a Merry Christmas. He said to me today that he hoped people saw him in church today because he, he hoped that someone that will remember this happy memory upon Christmas Day. Who made lame beggars walk and blind men see, eh? It really is such a small fix. But very much appreciated. I paid off such a little leather. A toast to Mr. Scrooge. What? 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 It only seems right that I should. To honour my employer, I give you, Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast has been completely lost your mind, indeed. Hmm. If he was here right now, I'd give him a piece of mind to feast on it. I bet he would choke on it too. Oh, my dear, it's Christmas Day. The man is up! I am lucky to even work at all. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this delicious meal on our table. He's a good man, a man to be respected. I suppose he deserves one blessing, even if he is an odious, wicked, unfeeling man. He's the founder of the feast. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> she is right. I am a kid in me. No, 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 Nothing Scrooge could do or say 
could stop the relentless march of those terrible bells. Ding, 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 ding. Tonight, at midnight, my life will end. Spirit, don't leave me. Down, 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 down. You will be haunted by three spirits. Ding, 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 ding. Without their visits, you have no hope. Well, my time is nearly done. I have one last duty to perform, and that duty is to leave you the ghost. Costumes, but uh, they are uh, uh, nerdy actors underneath, and uh, the costumes that uh, uh, love dressing up and haven't really stopped being big kids. Um, uh, it's uh, all part of telling the story, so don't be scared, kids. Uh, uh, and if you see Granny looking weary, uh, just tell her it's uh, just make believe, really. Uh, where are you going? Uh, and, oh, and, uh, well, uh, it's my uh, my moment coming up, so uh, I need to go powder my nose and uh, learn my lines a bit. You're in the play? Uh, of course. I mean, how else would I know the story? I told you, I was there. But who's going to tell the story? Uh, and, uh, well, the, the tiny Tim there and uh, Scrooge's... Uh, wait, he's going to give him a minute. Darkness, the air turned a sudden and chilling cold. A fog appeared across the road. Scrooge desperately peered around him, clutching a single, small candle light. But nothing, not even the sound of bells or clock chimes. Instead, an eerie silence. And then suddenly, a shadow appeared in front of him where the window once stood. A faceless being with a hooded cloak instead of a head. The figure said nothing. It slowly moved towards Scrooge. He flinched in fear. His eyes widened and his face turned a fearful shade of white. The figure stopped in front of Scrooge and slowly began to open its cloak in front of him. Almost as if it had two enormous wings. Am I in the presence of the person who has come? You are here to show me things that have not yet happened. Is that not so, Spirit? <coughs> you would think that I would be used to ghostly company by now. But I am not. I am afraid. You frightened me like never before. But I know your purpose here is to do me good. So I bid your company with a thankful heart. But 
Tell me it is not too late. Please. Otherwise, this man's dark chamber will stay with me forever. Is there not one person in this whole town who will show emotion for this man's death or any death? Please, spirit, show me such a person. I beseech you. Oh, please, spirit, take me to a place of joy and laughter. Please, please, spirit. Oh, it's Bob Cratchit's house. But wait, spirit, why is it so quiet? Oh, Mother, you're crying again. The light light hurts my eyes. My eyes are weak in the dim light. I don't want your father to see me like this! Where has father got to? He walks a little slower than he used to these last few evenings. He used to walk so fast with Tim upon his shoulders. He walked with the spring in a skin in his step. And so did I. Me too. He was so light, no trouble at all, no struggle at all, and he ever did so enjoy carrying him. Hello, my dears. Children, lay the table. How was the church? Oh, it was lovely. You should have, you should have come, it would have done you good. See how green it all was. I picked a nice little spot on the hill, a tiny Tim. They can watch the ducks on the river. What's the love watching the ducks on the river? I saw uh, Mr. Scrooge's nephew, Fred, today. He was visiting his mother. He saw her look a little down and he asked what was wrong. I told him what happened and he said how sorry he was. And he said if we need anything, anything at all, we should ask him for help. I don't think he said it for the sake of being kind, you know. He knew Tim. He, re he remembered how Tim would always stop and say hello. Fred is such a kind gentleman. He said Tim will never be forgotten. And won't be. Never. He'll always be in our hearts. No, Fred. He was only a child. A poor little child. He didn't deserve to die. If only I'd known, if only I'd known, I didn't mean, I didn't mean. If they're going to die, they'd better do it and reduce the surplus population. No! Answer me this one question. Are these the shadows of things that will definitely be? Or are they in the shadows of things that just might be? Please, Spirit, show me a speckle of kindness. And I will never forget the lessons that the three spirits have taught me. 
But you must ensure me that it is not too late and that all these things can be wiped away. All the shadows that I see before me and the name on this tombstone. It all can change. It must change. I can change. No Jacob Marley, but there is the window. No ghost, no spirits. I have been saved. I have been given a second chance, a glimpse of the spirits that might have been. And now I will make sure that they will never be. I will honor Christmas with my whole heart and live in the past, present, and future, and never forget the lessons that the three spirits have taught me. But, but, wait, I, I feel as light as a feather. Yes, I, I feel happy. I feel an over-sensitive, overwhelming sense of joy. I could scream. I could laugh. <laughs> I feel as young as a schoolboy again. But wait. What day is it? What month is it? How long have I been asleep for? And, ha, huh, what is that I hear? Ding dong very high, in heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong very the sky is risen with angels singing. Gloria, Rosanna in its chalices. Here there, my dear boy. Tea? Yes. Would you be kind enough to please tell me what day it is today? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir. Oh, Christmas! It's Christmas! I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. Oh, boy, do you know the poulterers in the next sheet but one? I do, sir. And do you know whether they have sold that enormous price for them yet? They haven't, sir. Oh, good. Then. Take this money and go and buy it. And when you come back, I'll give you half a crown. No, I shouldn't. Quick as you can now. I'll send it to Bob Clatchett's house. He won't know what's it. It'll be as big as tiny. No, bigger in fact. Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas Day. It really is Christmas Day. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we found us from fields and mountain more and mountain following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star of royal duty bright. Westward leading still more seas, he dies to thy perfect land. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold and green to crown him with him. King forever sees his wonder over us all to reign. O star of wonder, star of light, star of light and beauty bright, westward leading still more 
It's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. Oh, let's go and see who's outside. Merry Christmas to you, and a Merry Christmas to you. Mrs. Scrooge. Oh, it's the charity brother. Oh, it's you. Oh, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I have a question to put. Would you be kind enough of to forgive me for being so rude to you the other day? And would you be able to be able put down for how much? A moment, a yearly donation. Oh, I don't know what to say. There is no need to say it. But if you do anything to pay me, my nephew lives in a few streets. And if you could get a message to me to say that I would be pleased and honoured to accept his invitation to Christmas dinner. Oh, of course, certainly, sir. Now, there is just one person that I must see. Take the whole so funny. Second father. He, uh, he became as good as uh, a friend, as good as a, a, a master, and as good a man as uh, uh, the good old city ever had. And uh, uh, so, as Tiny Tim uh, observed, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> well, wrong? I mean, it's a decent story, don't get me wrong, but that's all it is, isn't it? Story, I mean. I get what Mr. Dickens was trying to do, but have things really changed? People are still poor, aren't they? I'm still living on the streets. Where's the Mr. Scrooge in my story? Excuse me, my fellow. My young friend would like to give you a gift. It's not for much. I see it For me? Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! As you know, we are raising money for them 
more grown children's home. So please, if you have a few pennies, put them in the buckets on the way out and the ladies will show you where they are. Thank you.